So, Peter Fascinelli, Dr. Carlisle Cullen. Uh, we've had to wait a whole year since Breaking Dawn Part 1. Has um, it been that long? Yes. I guess it has been. Well, it will be when it yeah. comes out. Um, what can you tell us about filming the final two parts? Um, were they done in sequence or was there a definite break? No, they were they were done simultaneously. So we shot part one and part two uh, simultaneously as one long film that they ended up cutting into two films. So at any given day we were filming uh, sequences from part one and then we would literally be doing a scene from part two. It was a lot to keep track of as an actor because you had all, it's an emotional journey when you do a film. You always have to know where your character is. A lot of times you shoot out of sequence, but in this it was literally like a, you know a 200-page script, <laughs> and then you're like, where is my character in this? Because you're going from completely a one movie to the next. So I kind of just broke it up into uh, you know uh, Renesmee's birth, uh, everything that before Renesmee's birth was part one, and everything after Renesmee's birth was part two. So I'd be like, is this? Is Renesmee born yet? No? Okay, so I know where I am in this movie. Uh, is she born now? She's born? Okay, I know where I am in this movie. And I, but it was a lot to keep track of. Um, and Breaking Dawn Part 2 will bring the phenomenon to an end. Can you remind us at what point the story does pick up in Part 2? In Part 2, uh, well, let's start with Part 1. In Part 1, Bella's life is being threatened by this baby. At the end of Part 1, uh, the baby is now born, and she has become a vampire. In part two, uh, we have this moment of, of joy and celebration because the threats to her life are now over, but it's very short-lived because once the Voltori find out that we have a vampire baby, uh, it's kind of a golden rule that you can't have a vampire baby, and they want to come not only kill the baby, but punish our whole family and wipe our, our existence. So uh, we always have these small moments of, of joy, and then, and then the clouds kind of roll in, and, and, and again, in this film, the stakes are are a lot higher because not only is one person's life being threatened, but the whole family's existence is being threatened. Um, and Dr. Carlisle Cullen is the rock that holds the Cullen family together. Yeah. Can you tell us what challenges he has to face in this final installment? Well, in this final installment, you know, not only is Carlisle's whole family being, uh, you know, put at risk and, and faces, you know, annihilation, but his whole ideology is, is, uh, is at risk because for Carlisle, he kind of created this new vampire way of thinking. He's kind of anti-establishment with the vampire world. He's kind of branched off and created this new vampire lifestyle where it's like uh, you're a vegetarian vampire, you don't have to feed on humans. Uh, and I think in his mind, he's hoping that one day that could grow into, you know, having humans and, and vampires kind of live harmoniously together, you know? And if, and if his family is, is taken out and Carlisle is taken out, his whole that whole ideology is, is, is gone as well. Everything he's worked for the last 350 years to, to uh, put together is, is now wiped out as well. And I've always enjoyed the tone of the films. They take the material seriously, but um, they manage to have moments of levity yeah. as well. Um, what can we expect from Breaking Dawn Part 2? Because as you said, there's a lot of tension still to cover. Um, yeah, the, you know, there's the the best of times and <laughs> there's the worst of times and in this last film you get a little bit of both you know you really get this really uh, joyous celebration where everything you've kind of worked for and we've worked for in the last four films where Bella's now a vampire and and uh, Bella and Edward are finally together and and they have this wonderful child it's like it's everything that that we've been working towards and now it's about to be ripped out from under us so uh, I don't know, know where the... There's some moments of lev levity in the sense that vampire uh, that Bella's now a vampire, so she, she, Bella has to deal with, you know, how to act as a vampire, which is kind of fun. Um, so you do get those fun, fun moments. And um, at its core, we obviously have a romantic story, which has now produced Daughter. Uh, what developments in Bella and Edward's relationship can we expect to see with the responsibility of baby Renesmee? Well, they're parents now, you know, it's a, it's a whole new set of responsibility. And um, the, what I was most impressed about was uh, Kristen's transformation from, from this fragile human to this strong, confident vampire. I think, I think you'll really enjoy her transformation as an actress because, you know, the first four films, she's this girl who's awkward and kind of shy and clumsy, who's always needing rescue. 
And in this last film, it's almost a coming of age story where she's become this strong, confident woman. And even in the way she stands and her demeanor is, is completely different. And, uh, and, and, and she now comes to our rescue, which is, is really comes full circle and, and is, is a quite a nice finale. And finally, I'm feeling wistful about the end of the Twilight Saga. So how much Can we have a good cry it? together? Let's hold hands. Oh, God. <laughs> Should we just cry? Um, so how must you and the, the cast feel about leaving behind these much-loved characters and the phenomenon that is... Well, it's not, it's not only leaving the characters behind because the characters are immortalized on film and uh, you'll, from years from now you'll be able to go back and, and enjoy them as much as you want. I think for us it's the experience that's, that's now going to be gone and, and coming to an end. And, and for the Twilight fans, that camaraderie of, of this one movie that, that brought people together from all over the globe. And, you know, you have um, people who would tent out for the premieres and they would come and, and they'd make friends with their neighbors. And it was all, you know, it just kind of, I love things that bring people together for something that, that they, they love. And it's such a pure, uh, wonderful thing. And, and I, I'm, I'll miss that for the fans, too, you know, that experience of being able to be like, hey, we're Twihards, you know. Hopefully um, they'll have Twihard night and be able to bring the box DVD set and make popcorn and, you know, watch all the movies together. Peter Fascinelli, thank you very much. Thank you very much.